Thank you for your time, Ms. Uh, we are from the International Commission for Public Rights and it's a state uh, organization from the diaspora and international uh, organization working on the public rights uh, globally and particularly right now in Nepal. Uh, we are here to submit a joint memoranda uh, to ensure the public right in the upcoming new constitution of Nepal. Uh, at this point, we appreciate your time and I would like to introduce first our team. Uh, then we'll move on to the, our briefing and then we'll definitely uh, would like to hear from your commitment how you will ensure this, uh, you know, the government that you reach into this right place and the right authority in Paul. Uh, and we have a national community which is a diaspora organization in Paul. They would like to also join with us. So by the time they begin, uh, I would like to introduce myself uh, as a uh, part of the delegation, which I'm very proud of. And then the Dr. Zimmerman is a vice chairman of this uh, our organization uh, and he's a professor. And I will follow this side and then I will ask him to talk about this memory. Uh, 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 For the interest of the, the broader group, I'm speaking in English now. Um, I've been, um, I've, I grew up in Nepal and India, uh, spent my childhood school there. But now I've lived in the United States for 25 years. So I've been here long. Um, and I, I'm a founding member and the current treasurer of um, ICDR. Uh, and I'm proud to be. Um, Founding member, and I'm very happy to be here today. Thank you, Your Excellency. My name is Makua, and I'm a supporter of the work of ICDR, and I've worked with them this past spring on a wonderful global conference we held here in Washington, and I continue to be of support in the ways that I can to help uh, raise awareness around the issue and to support things like really coming here before you all today. So thank you for having us. Thank you so much for having us. Um, I, my name is Bordy Mehta, and um, I'm also a supporter and also a researcher. So I'm a um, historian and anthropologist at TJ Colorado College now, and my research is on Dalit activism, um, especially transnational activism. My name is Yuri Rukira Pimiri. I'm deputy chief of mission with Guanti Boris. I'm the embassy, and I've been working here since one and a half years. My name is Narayan Mainali, I'm a counselor of the embassy working here for the last two years. So you need to sign the yeah. memorandum? to brief about the, the, this um, memorandum, what the issue, what are the issues we, uh, we have concern and would like to draw attention uh, the Nepal Constitution Assembly and the government of Nepal to you as Excellency. Well, thank you very much. I also appreciate everyone's time. My name is Don Zimmerman. I am a professor of healthcare management and policy. And I do not wish to portray myself as an expert in elite issues. Uh, my background is here in Washington as a policy person. So my approach to this is going to try to give everyone a framework for the policy level thinking that went into this document. It starts with a belief that a representative government should create the opportunities for all voices to be heard from the population that is being governed. When we look at that goal in the context of Nepal, uh, 
I, there's a second point here in the memorandum that simply proclaims a recognition that caste-based discrimination exists as part not only of the culture but in the structure of the society itself. And again, from a policy point of view, given that there are these barriers to full participation, the policy recommendation here is to create a special mechanism that recognizes that differential access to self-governance through, in effect, what we would call here in the United States an affirmative action program that would say, that would set out a certain requirement uh, for the executive branch, from the legislative branch, and the judicial branch, for delete participation. That would require uh, special attention in not only the formation of the final constitution, but in the governance of the country as we move forward. So that's the general framework for the logic. Now, in saying that, uh, in working with DB and my colleagues, I know that those are not easy things to make happen in Nepal, given all of the various voices involved. However, what this memorandum tries to do is elevate that discussion to the point of saying, here are the goals. Here's what we want to see happen. We believe that everyone, regardless of point of birth, has the right for their voice to be a participant actor, actor in the government of this country. That's what it should be. Second of all, it's not right, but we also recognize that caste-based discrimination is, if you will, a real thing, that it affects millions of people in negative ways. And that third, we need to do, as a government, something about that. And so what this memorandum does is simply outline in effect, the, the requirement for 25% participation of the elites as well as other discriminatory or discriminated populations to be involved at the, again, the, in all, all levels of government, national and, as well as regional and the local areas. So that's the central logic of what we've tried to put together here in this memorandum of in effect of, of, of goals or of aspirations. And we've been proud to sign it. So, is that yes. summarizing? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I will read it the other way because so let's have the communication on it. Yes, any additional. So, how do you put it on all that? Do you have it? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Please. So, um, from uh, also I'm not a constitution specialist, but I know that I, in a supreme document like the Constitution that sits at the top of a country uh, that has a history uh, of uh, uh, several hundred years. That document, that document, uh, I believe that every word uh, should be, uh, should mean something. And uh, in our review uh, that also, and we've been fighting together for Dalit rights, at least for a few years, I've joined um, ICDR, and um, both in India and Nepal. The norm as, the, as to how the society runs is uh, through social norms, where the caste is a predominant factor. I live in a village in, in Ilam where caste is an is a organizing um, principle. And in that setup, unless we start on this constitution strongly and clearly, we're not going to be able to eliminate uh, this system, which in fact will uh, deteriorate all of us, degrade all of us, and that is my belief. And a system that in my studies is um, not based on any scriptures, a system that is the flip side of what is written on the scripture should be eliminated uh, eventually and it is to uh, our benefit, benefit of our society to, to be clear on that and therefore um, I'm, I'm here, I'm willing to sign this document. I appreciate you.
Americans. Uh, again, being here today is an honor for me. I'm American born, I'm from the U.S., so my experience is through a lens of the, uh, the domestic civil rights movement here uh, in the States, and I've been very fortunate to bring together some of those roots in relationship with the ICDR and its growing movement to really uh, establish the Dalit rights as human rights as well. And particularly when we look at the question of uh, arriving at a casteless society, which again is what is outlined here as a way forward to achieve this. And so just to be here and observe this I think is very uh, momentous. And uh, I'm, I'm very grateful for that opportunity. So that's, that's what I would like to add. Thank you so much for letting me sit on this. And uh, it's really, really quite amazing to hear about the kind of work that's been going on both here in DC, but also the work that goes on here for, in the interest and on behalf of Dalits in South Asia. So my research is primarily on India. So I'm not terribly familiar with the situation in Nepal, but. Um, but just from what I've learned just today, it just seems that the work that the, um, the International Commission for Dalit Rights is doing is really, um, it's really, it's so important. And, um, and yeah, it's just thank you again for letting me sit Well, we welcome you in our embassy. And also would like to thank you very much for coming together to express your concern about Dalit Rights. It is also a serious concern of the government of Nepal. Now we have been uh, uh, discussing about it, how we can really ensure um, that the discrimination on the basis of cars can be abolished in practice. And that in principle, in our constitution, it is um, already abolished. There are several General rules and regulation enacted, but it is not really effective in uh, remote villages where people are still uh, suffering <coughs> this kind of discrimination. But it is not only a concern of the Dalit and Dalit movement, it is the concern of the government as a whole. Our Prime Minister, Koirala, uh, is very much concerned about it. Um, major uh, political party leaders are uh, very much concerned about it. There is a general consensus on abolition uh, this caste based discrimination, but there are several challenges related to new rules and regulation and uh, introducing new policies. Uh, so that we can genuinely uh, achieve the uh, equality of the basis of caste, not only class. So this is a really opportune moment for all of us to discuss about what are the major challenges, how we are going to ensure uh, that this can be could be reflected in the open uh, uh, constitution. So, uh, the concern that you have expressed today will uh, be in accord and forward this to the highest authority of government in the And if you were also going to share this with the Western Assembly official. Personally, I have a full sympathy and also commitment to join you.
I'm sorry, the police living abroad, uh, to seek their suggestions uh, the, uh, on the track that was the visualization. The issues are busy going around, talking to people, documenting their concern. So this is one of the things that we can use uh, in our uh, submission to the yeah. The president of Russia I appreciate the complexity of your position having to manage many different voices and many different issues at the same time. So uh, thank you very much for your, for your well chosen words. And uh, we hope the memorandum as well as other initiatives are successful in not only addressing the obvious areas of caste discrimination. So we're going to show you about these deeper issues of cultural violence. share in America some similarities with our inability to fully integrate African Americans and Latinos into mainstream society. While the laws guarantee equal rights, the underlying assumptions, especially as you can see in the presidential uh, discussions, still reflect deep prejudice against certain groups of people. And, you know, generally speaking, immigrants. <laughs> Yeah. And it's, I think, a struggle that every country, or many countries, have to deal with. So in some sense, you know, all countries have deletes. We will call them different things. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so these are universal problems and I think absolutely central to solve. But we were talking about this over before we came. The, the strategies for solving, it's easy to define the problem. <laughs> this is what I mean. It's yeah. uh, easy to describe, easy to yeah. philosophize, easy, easy to define, but difficult to really right. practice it. That's right. So, let's hear a little bit. Good follow-up. 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 Okay. All right. So I should just hand this to you, sir. Uh, this is our signed copy. We are certainly going to show your support and interest in the issue. Thank you. Thank you. 
Guardians.